It's happening. It's finally happening. As the self-appointed conductor of the AV1 hype train, the train is rolling into the station, baby! So while everything I just said is true, the, the, this is the case. What this actually represents is a paradigm shift for how Twitch handles live streams and how it prioritizes a better viewing experience for the viewer while reducing costs. And that means making a lot of changes that could put Twitch on top. And it means that you will potentially never have to worry about stream settings ever again. We'll get into it in the whole section. I am so excited. NVIDIA's CES briefing brought a lot of focus on generative AI, including chat with RTX, giving RTX 40 series owners access to large language models directly on their PCs for AI mucking about. That's coming later this month. There's improvements to the ACE hybrid AI NPC tech for games with a partnership with Convey to allow NPCs to dynamically chat back and forth between each other and the player with awareness of objects in the scene and stuff like that. Plus the big one, RTX Remix finally enters open beta on January 22nd. That is the toolkit that allows users to remaster older games quickly and easily, relatively, to add in ray tracing graphics. And they're equipping RTX Remix with generative AI tools to allow modders to upscale the textures and such too to match the higher end production that they're aiming for with these mods. This project was the most exciting AI announcement to come from Nvidia before, but it's been very slow going to get to this point. I'm very excited to see whether we get some neat and worthwhile RTX versions of games released with this, or if this just ends up, you know, all of the games coming from it end up being cursed. Time will tell. But the big, 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 big news has to do with streaming and Twitch. Sadly, it's not the big focus that it used to be for NVIDIA in these conferences, but that doesn't mean that we don't get something exciting here. Twitch is partnering with OBS and seemingly NVIDIA, at least at first, to release a new feature set called Enhanced Broadcasting. This feature directly addresses a common question I've seen people uh, ask of, why can't I just encode my own copies of the stream to send to Twitch or YouTube or whatever in higher quality? With this, a streamer equipped with an RTX graphics card can encode multiple different quality streams and send those to Twitch to target different viewers, including reaching up to 4K 60fps streaming. Initially, you'll only be able to encode up to three of these of your own streams at once, but the plan is to unlock it up to five long term, which would cover the gamut of 480p, 720p, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Alongside this, to enable high quality 1440p and 4K streaming, Twitch will begin experimenting with HEVC and AV1 codecs during the early access period for enhanced broadcasting. These are higher efficiency codecs than the traditional H.264 that you're used to sending to Twitch, which will allow you to send much higher quality at the same bitrate that you normally stream to Twitch, maintain the same quality at a much lower bitrate, and unlocks resolution options like 1440p and 4K. The details I've been given are sparse so far. All right, so while NVIDIA's presentation were, was pretty sparse for details on this program, I did time travel here with some inside details from Twitch to kind of paint a much clearer and much better picture of what the enhanced broadcasting thing is going to be. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the, the goal here is to provide a better viewing experience for the viewers while also reducing costs. Whenever you send a live stream to Twitch, you, you, you open OBS, you hit stream, you send a feed through the RTMP protocol to Twitch. This is how it's worked and we've had years of videos of best settings to optimize for quality and all that because they do have a bitrate cap in normal streaming. You do have a limit of six to eight megabits per second and you know that only gives you so much for quality. But then if you are not a partner or you're not a lucky affiliate or whatever, you don't have transcoding. Transcoding is how is the process of taking your stream and reconverting it or encoding it to lower qualities. And so that's how you, like by default, everyone gets source quality on Twitch. But then if you have transcoding, you also get, you know, you have your 1080p, but you also get 720p, 480p, 360p, whatever. Only partners are guaranteed to have that. And that means if you are streaming and someone from another country with poor internet or just another state in the US with worse internet or on mobile or whatever, they could have trouble loading your stream if you only have source quality. They could have buffering, they could just not be able to play it at all, it could chew through their data plan and they might not wanna watch it in that high of a quality. And so the strategy in prior years has always been to just, if you are that worried about mobile streamers, stream at 3.5 megabits per second instead of the full six or eight. But obviously there's quality concerns with that and whatever. Twitch is overhauling the streamer to Twitch relationship here to improve this. And this will not be like a partner exclusive thing. Partners will still get transcoding on Twitch's side regardless, but this enhanced broadcasting thing allows you as the streamer 
to replace the transcoding pipeline. It will allow you to send those other qualities for viewers to have and to reconfigure your stream on the fly based on your internet, the internet of your viewers, and, and all of those things, which is wild. This leverage is yet another update to the, so RTMP is the protocol that you typically stream to most streaming websites with. You know, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, whatever. You've typically always used RTMP, that is just the, the protocol that's used to send video from one place to another. It has lots of downsides, as plenty of other protocols have come up and shown, but it's been like seemingly the most reliable that everyone has used for these kinds of streaming platforms where you're, you're streaming your feed to a service that then converts it and streams it to many. That is typically what's used. Last year and moving into this year, we got an update to that protocol for the first time in a long time called Enhanced RTMP or RTMP Plus. It's had a couple names now. Enhanced RTMP seems to be the one it lands on that allows for newer codecs and for some, some subtitle support and things like that. And that is how on YouTube, we were able to start streaming AV1 and HEVC over to YouTube for higher quality from the streamer to YouTube. But YouTube still then transcodes everything and spits it out to the viewer. So there's Still some friction there, some delay and latency, some quality degradation, whatever. Yet another update is coming with help from Twitch that adds in multi-track video support, which means you're still stinning the RTMP stream over to Twitch, but you're all you're streaming multiple video tracks at a time and you're able to pack in that encoding, what's called an encoding ladder, which is you're just streaming those different tiers of video all in one stream just as separate video tracks, kind of like separate audio tracks. How on Twitch you can send your live stream audio and then the VOD track for audio if you want to exclude some audio from that for the VOD multiple video tracks. And so you can send that quality over. This also includes things like metadata, the potential for auto captioning, stuff, uh, the, the ability to experiment with AV1, HEVC, other newer codecs and things like that on Twitch's end, none of which have been really possible before. And so that extra metadata allows Twitch to communicate back and forth with OBS in this upcoming update that we're gonna experiment with that allows Twitch basically to keep reconfiguring your OBS on the fly. Because typically, whenever you set your stream settings and you go live, your stream settings are locked in for the duration of your stream. Twitch has no way to like, to, I mean, you have the, the dynamic bitrate option in OBS's advanced settings, but overall, there's no reconfiguring as you go in OBS. And this allows Twitch to basically just keep adjusting whatever you're sending based on your resources, their resources, and so on, to get the optimal experience for the viewer, period no matter what. At any post, just making a small correction that I thought was important to note. The auto configuration happens when you click start streaming, basically. It does not currently adjust on the fly, although that is something they could explore in the future. It is just when you click start streaming, but that is still super important and a big deal. And everything else I said is still good to go. And so this is gonna allow for higher quality, for lower latency with those transcode options, and for you to reach more people, even as a non-partnered streamer is a pretty big deal. And then we got to talk about that auto config thing because this is a big deal. I have been saying for years to stop, you know, I've made videos in the past about all the different X264 options, about an NVENC H264 flags, whatever. And as I've been saying for the past few years to stop worrying about that stuff, to stop stressing about it, to just kind of send the best you can and let your streaming service handle the rest. And this takes it to the next level to the extent that when you check this checkbox, you are no longer managing stream settings at all. It will take into account your system specs, your graphics card, me memory, CPU, whether you're on a dedicated you know, streaming PC or you're gaming and streaming on the same PC. It will take all of that into consideration and tell your OBS what settings to stream, how many different video tracks to send, what resolutions to send them at, what encoders to use. So if you have an RTX 40 series card, you'll be able to send AV1 or HEVC once they start unlocking those tiers for you to experiment with. And by the way, the, 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 the rest of the enhanced broadcasting with just normal streaming goes all the way back to GTX 900 series. So no one's getting left out. Awesome. It is mostly NVIDIA focused at first, but it'll get unlocked to everyone. So that means effectively as once this beta rolls out to everyone, it will be very they're going to take their time with it. They're inviting, you know, they're inviting groups from the applicants. You can go to twitch.tv slash broadcast or dashboard.twitch.tv slash broadcast and sign up for the beta. Then uh, it's open now. As soon as this video goes live over the next few days, they will be inviting more people in to test it and, you know, whatever. They'll have waves of people testing it out. And so as it rolls out or whatever, once people have access to it, the concept of optimized stream settings for Twitch will be dead because it will just be check the box and let Twitch handle it. 
Now, as I mentioned, hopefully before in the earlier cut of this video, you will basically be given three GPU based uh, encode streams by default at first year as they're trying to figure out how this impacts people's computers while they're doing other stuff. There's a lot to figure out here because this is a brand new workflow and it's gonna be pushing computers pretty hard. There's a lot they wanna figure out for the load balancing and stuff. So I think we're starting with three streams, but it can go up to five, maybe more, I don't know. Five is the encode limit for like GeForce cards anyway. But with the three, you're mostly probably gonna be looking at H.264 right now because viewers don't all have access to AV1 viewing and things like that. But as we get to the a higher number of encodes, you'll be able to potentially send along AV1 or HEVC along with your H.264 encodes and provide those extra high quality options to viewers. And with all this, the higher, the, the, the bit rate that you can send to Twitch obviously has to change too, because by default, you can send six to eight megabits per second. That's not enough for multiple streams of video. So they are gonna increase the aggregate cap here to allow for those multiple streams. Uh, according to their blog posts and stuff, we're looking at four to 10 megabits per second as the cap right now, but I'm told all of this is going to change on the fly. They are really, like, they are hammering home here that the focus is on providing the best viewer experience and using all of the beta testing and data to determine what they allow, what they extend, like, resources to, how they allocate things best to make sure they're providing the best experience. They don't want to just, which is what everyone's been asking for a few years now, to just flip on the high bitrate AV1 stream flag or whatever, and not really focus on what that looks like for everyone else viewing at home for those who don't have great internet connections. And I really, I respect that. Like, it, it, it's kind of a bummer sitting here as as I said, the, the AV1 hype train conductor to not have the, the direct answer be, yeah, we're turning on AV1, we're turning on, you know, what, 15 megabits per second. Everyone can have crisp quality streams now. But the fact that they are so focused on what the, the viewer gets and what that experience is, and that they do want to provide those higher quality things because that will allow for 1440p and 4K or whatever. That's really important. And the fact that this new setting allows the streamer to stop stressing over super technical settings and all of that, while also giving Twitch the control to dynamically adjust these things to enable those higher qualities. This is awesome. Like I am over the moon about this. Checking my notes here. This is, I'm just adding this into the video here. I don't think I really missed anything. Like I said, it's just all about, you know, the best quality. So I, I, I am over the moon. This has the potential, especially with how most other streaming services work, to put Twitch back on top in terms of the streamer to service and thus to viewer relationship. And the, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It, it, it just, this is a new paradigm and no server, no streaming services are really offering this kind of control in a way that are like, not, I guess it's the opposite of control, but like this kind of turnkey, like just set, your stream to Twitch and we'll take care of the rest and focus on making sure your viewers get the most. Because what matters when you're streaming is not your encoder flags or how many macro blocks you can squeeze out of your stream. It is the quality of the content. It is your personality. It is your engagement. It is your, uh, your ideas. And so they're, they're taking that stress and that variable away to just make sure the viewer gets the best so that you shine brightest pretty freaking great. All right, there's some other news to share in, in the video. This has been way too long. I am so freaking excited. Twitch stream quality is about to enter a whole new era. It has the potential to even be better looking than YouTube if they allow source quality. Get subscribed, we'll get there. Synth Rock Expansion Packs 1 and 2, now available on USB cassette tapes. Get a piece of backing track that tethers our classic roots to our modern streaming world, and get music to use in your streams and videos. Support our free music project by picking up a set for yourself, and get some free bootleg button pins with your order at glitch.mov slash synthrock. Of course, NVIDIA also announced three new GPUs contributed to their messy lineup here, but a big new announcement came after that. First. RTX 4070 Super launches on January 17th for $599 with the same GPU core as the RTX 4070 and 4070 Ti, but with 20% more CUDA cores than the 4070 Ti. 
12 gigabytes of VRAM, and supposedly about 95% of the performance of the 4070 Ti. But unfortunately, still only one encoder chip since it uses that smaller GPU compared to the two encoder chips on the 80 and 90 series cards that provides some lovely benefits. Next is the 4070 Ti Super. Yes, they, they really went there for $799, launching on January 24th. This uses the full bigger GPU as the, the, the same one as the 80 class cards, which gives it dual encoders. It gets a bump to 16 gigabytes of VRAM and a 256 memory bus versus the 192 bit on the 4070 Ti, more memory bandwidth and 10% more cores. Lastly, there's the RTX 4080 Super, which is considered the fully unlocked card with this GPU die. <sighs> This one runs $999 and drops January 31st. This one has 5% more cores than the 4080 Ti and an upgraded 23 gigabits per second memory bandwidth while staying at the same 320 watt TGP. Supposedly, this thing is 1.4x faster than the 3080 Ti without frame gen, but we'll see. At this point, I don't think you're gonna notice a big difference between 4080 Ti and 480, 4080 Super, maybe down the road. Adding even more GPUs to the lineup isn't all that interesting, but what was hyped to me was the upcoming display tech being announced at CES. 4K 240Hz OLEDs are coming. Nvidia is announcing an Alienware one coming later in Q1, but I also know of a few other 4K 240Hz screens that are coming as well, including a couple that can do 4K 240Hz and 1080p 480Hz, which is Nuts! We are getting closer to CRT qualities of being able to run different resolutions freely and gain refresh rate for doing so, which is cool. Beyond the literal displays, NVIDIA is announcing a new G-Sync feature called G-Sync Pulsar, designed to further reduce motion blur. This appears to be basically black frame insertion, but specifically tailored to work within the adaptive sync tech and run at much higher rates. So I was not briefed as to what the supported refresh rates might be just yet. Since adaptive sync means that the refresh rate is adjusted on the fly, it's been difficult to get BFI working before. How can your display reliably insert black frames between the full frames if the pacing of the full frames is constantly changing after all? But I guess Nvidia has cracked the code here, and I simply cannot wait to see how this looks on a high refresh rate OLED. This was just an announcement day. I don't have anything physical or tangible just, you know, to show you just yet, but stay tuned for more hardcore coverage on enhanced broadcasting and some of the new display tech. To learn more about BFI and why it matters, check out this video where I put OLED to the test versus CRT monitors to see who wins in the modern day. Or for something retro, go check out the, this video on epic new PlayStation 2 mods over on my gaming channel. Remember to be kind, rewind. We're here, baby! We're here! <laughs>